you know, sports is the greatest, greatest metaphor we have in terms of dealing with life. Because, you know, even if you listen to music, music will give you guidance, mm -hmm. right, that you can then meditate on and think about how you would apply it. In sports, you have to apply it in the here and now. I mean, you're faced with challenges moment to moment. You're faced with pressures and anxiety and communication or the lack thereof and all this other stuff. Like, it's in the moment. So you have to live it. And when you practice those things, you become better at it. But I just feel like in this day and age, our children have become less imaginative about how to problem solve. And parents and coaches have become more directive in trying to mandate or give orders or teach kids how to think and teach kids how to behave versus and tell them how to behave versus teaching them how to behave and so that's why i'm creating these stories and creating this content yeah i love that i think it's so true when you treat people as kids then they always be kids right even when they grow up yeah. and for you it was really powerful because you've talked about this before where your father said to you like whether you score zero or 60 yeah like i love you yeah. Tell me what that statement meant to you at that time and, and how did it actually motivate you to continue scoring 60 rather well, than go, oh, I'm all right at zero? Well, it did more than that, right? So like the basketball stuff you know, speaks for itself in terms of what that comment made, you know, did for me in terms of giving me stability and giving me confidence to say, okay, it's okay to fail because you're going to be loved no matter what. And that, that doesn't just mean basketball. It means anything in life. That means writing. That means being an entrepreneur. That means um, having the confidence to go for it. And um, I've seen too many parents do the exact opposite. And it terrifies children. And children become paralyzed by their own fear because uh, they don't have that security blanket of love and comfort. You know, I, what I try to do is just try to be still and understand that things come and go. Emotions come and go. The important thing is to accept them all, to embrace them all, and then you can choose to do with them what you want versus being controlled by emotion. You know, a lot of times I've seen players, even myself, you know, when I was younger, being consumed by a particular fear um, and to the point where you're saying, okay, nah, it's, it's not good to feel fear. I shouldn't be nervous in a situation like that. And it does nothing but grow. Versus stepping back and saying, yeah, I, I am nervous about the situation. Yeah, I am fearful about the situation. But what am I afraid of? And then you kind of unpack it. Mm -hmm. And then it gives you the ability to look at it for really what it is, which is nothing more than your imagination <laughs> running its course. You know, yeah. you, know? Like, you, you think about game winning shots and, or game winning free throws. And people go to the free throw line and they're nervous about it. Well, what are you really nervous about? If you unpack that, okay, you, you're nervous that you're going to miss the shot. All right, so you missed the shot, then what happens? People are going to be embarrassed. You're going to be embarrassed because thousands of people, millions of people see you missed the shot. All right, and then what? People are going to talk bad about you. Okay, right? And so you're looking at it, you go, are those things even important? <laughs> you know what I mean? If that, if that is my fear, like what, what is, you worried about letting your teammates down? Okay, have you let them down before? Oh, I'm sure, and practice and things of that nature, right? They're still there, Yeah. you know? And so when you're able to unpack it, you kind of look at it for what it is, which is really nothing. How did you get that mentality of just being like, I need to get over this. Like, I need to get over myself. You know, trial and error. Mm. You know, you grow up and you make game-winning shots and it's awesome. And you come back the next day and miss a game-winning shot and it's misery. And then the next day comes and you're back playing again. And you understand that life has this cyclical nature where it's, you know, what you do on Monday, it's fantastic. But then Tuesday is a bad day. But guess what? There's Wednesday. Yeah. So are we just supposed to live our lives like this the whole time? <laughs> you know, versus just staying like this and understanding that it's really just a journey of evolution every day. It's just constant improvement, constant curiosity, constantly getting better. The results don't really matter. Uh, it's the figuring out that matters. And man, like I, I've seen a lot of players, um, especially now in, you know, in, in youth basketball, then with that, um, you have players that are like bigger, and faster, and stronger, and you know their coaches are just coaching them for results. You know, we're just going to use your size that because you're bigger than every other 12 year old out there to dominate today. And, and, but they're not growing, mm. right? So they're just based on that result, but they're not focused on growing this young child yeah. into becoming a better athlete. And, and through that, you're teaching them how to become a more well-rounded person. And we're missing that. Where did you develop that from, that ability to see beyond, to think deeper, to, to reflect deeper? Where did that come mm, from? Well, I had to do that because, you know, I grew up, growing up in Italy, um, when I first moved over there, it was, you know, 
I didn't speak Italian, I didn't have any friends. You know, I had the game of basketball and through sport and playing soccer, I was able to make friends and build connections. But it was a lot of time spent alone. And, and when I came back to the States, I wasn't the most athletic kid. You know, I was really scrawny, like really, really skinny and had like major knee issues because I was growing. So I was the <laughs> dorky kid with high socks and big old knee pads. It's fashionable now. It's fashionable now. <laughs> it wasn't then. It wasn't then. And, and so um, I had to look long term. Because in the here and now, I couldn't compete with these kids. I mean, there was kids that were like 12 years old with beards. Like, I can't. <laughs> I can't what am I supposed to do with that? Like, they're, they're doing windmills and dunking backwards. And I'm happy to, like, tap the backboard, you know? So I had to look at it from a long term because I wasn't going to give up on the game. Right. So I had to say, okay, this year, I'm going to get better at that. Mm. Next year, this. And then so forth and so on. And then patiently, I was able to catch them. It's, it's just piece by piece, and it's the consistency of the work, which mm. I feel like a lot of parents uh, are missing today because we're not teaching that to our kids. We tend to say, like, kids don't want to do the work, but in reality, it's us. I mean, we're failing them because we're not leading them the right way and teaching them yeah. you know, how to fish, you know what I mean? And so, like, the consistency of work, Monday, get better. Tuesday, get better. Wednesday, get better, right? And you do that over a period of time, you know, not like one month or two months. I mean, it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, and then you you know you can get to where you want to go. We we overestimate what we can do in one year and underestimate what we can do in ten years. No doubt. How have you dealt with winning? Like when you win, what goes through your mind to help you to um, continue winning? Well it's a little different. Like in, in basketball it was different because you know, I expected to win. Mm. You know, like I expected us to win championships. I expected us to win five, quite honestly, I expected us to win eight. Um and so when you have that vision in sports, it's a direct competition. Like I know how hard they're working. I know how hard we're working. I know what their strategy is. I know what ours is, you know? So it's a little different. So when we went in the NBA, it was like, yeah, we expected to do that. But now we, we're gonna come back and we're gonna do it again, you know? And so it's that constant, like, all right, you're churning. You win one championship, I'm back in the gym the next day, working, getting ready for the next one. Now, uh, it's different because it's not about the awards. You know, you just wind up trying to create something that's that's going to inspire uh, someone mm. that hopefully, you know, through that inspiration, they can inspire somebody else. And what I've come to learn as my career went on is that's more significant than any championship is how do you connect with somebody that can then connect with another? Mm. And then with, whether the awards come or not, you know, that's for, you know, uh, you know the Academy, Academy. Award. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, body to decide yeah. but you know like for us it's just to try to create things <laughs>